This is a Sandy Boy Productions podcast. Welcome to the Urban Pharmacy Podcast, where we help women remove the overwhelm of living their most holistic life. This is the place to find evidence-based nutrition tactics, healthy lifestyle and wellness tips, abundance mindset, and easily implementable low-tox living strategies so you can rise up to your full potential and protect your family's health. I'm your host, Stacey Heine certified holistic nutritionist and better living advocate. Now let's get empowered with some simple swaps that make a big impact for optimal wellness. Welcome to episode 15 of the Urban Pharmacy Podcast. Today, I have my friend, Dr. Sung Wan on the episode, and I want you to hear all of the gems that he has to offer. We talk about what ancestors really ate. We talk about his brand called Neogen. We talk about how to find reputable supplements. How does nitric oxide affect our age? why vitamin B is so important, differences between animal and plant sources of nitrate, the benefits of the elderberry plant, and more. Dr. Sung Wan is a dual fellowship trained physician and orthopedic surgeon. He provides the most comprehensive methods of stem cell therapy and regenerative treatments, as well as lifestyle medicine to prevent and reverse chronic disease. Dr. Wan is an innovator of stem cell technology for over 12 years for orthopedic and spine conditions. Dr. Wan developed the four pillars of regenerative medicine and customizes the regenerative treatment for all of his patients. PRP, bone marrow concentrate, growth factors, amniotic, umbilical cord, plasma concentration, and other innovative technologies are utilized to activate and enhance the regenerative treatment. His passion in medicine is utilizing nutrition and lifestyle methods to prevent and reverse chronic disease and optimize health. His research and treatment methods have helped many patients avoid invasive treatments by reversing them through natural means. Let me tell you what, Dr. Wan is full of so much good information and I know that you are going to love this jam-packed episode. Give us a five-star review if you love it and let us know what you think by tagging us in Instagram. All right, here we go. Dr. Sun Wan. All right, welcome Dr. Sung Wan to the Urban Pharmacy Podcast. I'm so excited to have you here. Let's just go right in with the questions. So tell me a little bit about your background and why you got into longevity and lifestyle medicine. Sure. Uh, First, thank you for uh, having me here today. Uh, It's lots of fun. Uh, I've been a practicing uh, orthopedic spine surgeon for uh, near, uh, nearly 20 years, and, and also my passion has been a stem cell uh, research. Uh, but 10 years ago, uh, I lost a, a dear friend of mine who was uh, in his mid-40s. He was, was my anesthesiologist, and we worked together almost every single case. I specialized and, and pioneered in minimally invasive surgery where we uh, got exposure to a lot of radiation and unfortunately he passed away uh, with the lung cancer you know we used to joke around that uh, uh, because we were experimenting uh, we used two different uh, uh, x-ray machines in the operating room and got great deal of exposure and we said hey someday we'll probably get cancer and and uh, unfortunately lost a dear friend of mine and then also i started noticing a lot of minimally invasive surgery uh, surgeons developing cancers in their hand as well as their thyroid uh, and other type of cancer. Uh, and that got me to start researching about a cancer, how to prevent it. Because although we joked about it, 
didn't necessarily want to uh, develop the cancer. And, and through that journey, found out uh, so much information that we never learned in medical school about how we can prevent and reverse most of the chronic disease. Learning that most of the cancer is uh, uh, developed by ourselves. It's not something uh, uh, genetic. And, and that's how I start getting involved with the, the nutrition and lifestyle modification, longevity medicine, as well as a lifestyle medicine. And, um, uh, and realizing that traditional medicine is important, but that is really about management of the disease. We hardly learn anything about uh, prevention, utilizing the nutrition, uh, and then even reversing, and also even beyond that, even optimizing our health. Uh, and read through thousands of papers and doing our own research, uh, realized that, hey, we, we got to change our way. And that's how I really got involved with the, the longevity and lifestyle medicine. Wow, what a story. I'm so sorry to hear about your friend. That is super powerful, though, and wow. So it does just show how much our environment has so much to do with our health. And I teach on that, and I know you are a big advocate for plant-based nutrition. And so... Was that part of your learnings? Is that why you went down the plant-based path because of all of the evidence that you found behind, you know, disease prevention? Oh yeah, oh, absolutely. Doing going through all those uh, 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 scientific papers because it has to be evidence-based. Before that, you know, I've done all the the typical bro science things. I've done the the low carb diet. To, to lose weight, you know, you're in med school, so you eat whatever is available during the same thing with the residency. Uh, and then uh, if it's in front of you and you have five minutes, then you eat it. And then over time, you know, you naturally gain weight. So we've done the, the paleo diet, low carb diet, but that's just basically, we got this information just like everybody else from the internet or YouTube and not necessarily from the medical school or during the residency, um, because we never learned it. But during and the, the research, uh, uh, how to prevent cancer, discover so much about the nutritional health and, and that, uh, you know, comparing, you know, keto versus paleo versus, you know, uh, Whole30 or whatever that might be, realizing that it, you know, we got to go back to our roots and, and, and our, our ancestors really ate mostly whole food plant-based nutrition because that was the only thing that was available. And, and to really optimize our health for prevention of the disease and reversal and, and optimization so we can thrive, realize that the whole food plant-based nutrition was the, the best, especially for me, but I believe that it is the, the best type of diet for, for most people that's, uh, 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 that's out there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, you know, studies show that from way back in the day, like from fecal um, testing, it w it, like you said, it was ma mainly fiber. It was mainly mm -hmm. fiber that people were consuming. So um, that is what our bodies are. Yeah. So, so they've actually uh, looked at all the, the studies, like the you know the the residues, uh, the studies from the, the you know the fossils, fecal fossils, and then also looking at the the, the last uh, uh, you know hunters and gatherers. They were mostly really gatherers and hunters. Uh, the women and children gathered, and that was their majority of their food. The guys would go out and maybe once a month would catch something, and then the whole village would eat. And and the last uh, um, the the gatherers and hunters are in. Tanzania, the Hazards, uh, and when you look at them, they uh, consume about 100 to 150 grams of fiber per day, and then they, they have no heart disease, no diabetes, no obesity, no cancer, right? And in order to consume that much uh, of fiber, you can't eat anything. I mean, they're not vegans, but uh, whenever they catch uh, uh, an animal, they, they eat the whole thing. However, that is so rare event that... 99% of the time, they may not be voluntarily, but, but because that's all they have, uh, they are pretty much a plant-based. And that's how I really, the, the, the answers, most of the, the ancestors uh, really live. Got it. That is so interesting. Okay, so I want to ask you today about Neogen. Tell me about your partner company that you created. 
Yeah. So it was uh, at first. It wasn't just me. It was with the the other stem cell physicians and other uh, lifestyle medicine uh, physicians. The way it, it came about was this. Um, you know, we were doing a lot of uh, stem cell uh, therapy for our patients so that they could avoid surgery, whether it is for spine or whether it is for orthopedics. And one of the uh, 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 most important thing about uh, them is, you know, we would harvest uh, their bone marrow from their uh, iliac crest and, um, and then uh, uh, isolate the, the stem cells and inject it into whether it's a ligament, a tendons or into the joint or in, even into the disc. But we also needed to optimize their environment so that it becomes successful. Unfortunately, it's not covered by the insurance uh, and it's a very expensive procedure. And so we spent a great deal of time uh, educating our, our patients. Just like you know, uh, patients who had heart attack, we would encourage them to eat about a pound of green leafy vegetables in a day so that they could elevate the nitric oxide in, in, in their body. As you know, that by the time we're 40, we lose about 50% of our ability to produce nitric oxide. By the time we're 60, we lose about 85%. And most of the people who need stem cell therapy for orthopedics ranges anywhere from 40 to, to 75. And so their nitric oxide is so depleted and, and it is so important because it's nitric oxide that mobilizes and then also activates our stem cells. And without it, you can put all the stem cells you want it just won't mobilize and won't do what we're asking them to do. So we needed to uh, optimize their body. But most of these uh, patients, if you have a heart attack, then you know there's a death, potentially a death coming. They're more motivated. But even then, studies show that most people change their behavior only for about six weeks. Okay? And so for, for orthopedics, a lot of times they said, you know what, I would rather have surgery than change my diet. Mm -hmm. And so, so we needed to uh, help them and said, okay, if they won't eat uh, a green leafy vegetables uh, or eat mostly uh, plant-centered meals, then we need to come up with a way to, to help them boost the nitric oxide. So we actually went to the market and, and group of us and, and looking for the, the most optimal uh, nitric oxide uh, supplement for our patients. We couldn't find any. Either they were significantly underdosed, they had the wrong ingredients, or they were designed uh, for younger bodybuilders because you know a lot of bodybuilders love nitric oxide because they call it nitro pump because it dilates their blood vessel and then the, the bodybuilders wants to show off their veins and which contains a lot of caffeines and other stimulants and chemicals, which obviously would defeat the, the purpose of what we're trying to accomplish. So we, uh, out of necessity, we decided, okay, well, let's uh, uh, formulate our own and then and provide it for our, our patients. So we had initially no intention whatsoever uh, making it into a supplement company. We only made small portions of it uh, so that our patients could have it as part of their uh, therapy. And, and uh, but, but once they started taking it, it really helped them with their blood pressure and with all the other benefit that comes with it. You know, they were coming back and say, hey, my blood pressure is down. My you know, A1C is down. My blood sugar is better regulated. I have more energy. And all the benefits that you would typically see with, uh, by boosting the nitric oxide. And, and once they were done, they said, well, can we still order it from you? Or, or they said, well, my family members could benefit this. And then, then we, we, you know, like uh, then we started uh, just a, you know, a shopping cart on our website for our clinics. And then that's how it, it got evolved. And more and more people were demanding it. And then we said, okay, well, what if uh, besides the nitric oxide, there are other critical things that, uh, that most people need, but then uh, the, the supplement uh, uh, world out there is really not regulated uh, properly. And so can we recommend those to our patients in our clinic setting? We couldn't, and so we said, okay, well, let's try to come up with the, the ingredients. And then we don't wanna be a vitamin company. What we wanted to do is design the products for our, our patients so that, that it would really make a difference and make an impact in their health. And that's how the Neogen uh, came about. I love that. I love that. It all starts with, you know, the greater good. So that's amazing. And um, I feel like Neogen has started in the right place, which is amazing. Um, can you explain a little bit about how to find a good and reputable supplement? What do we need to look for? Yeah, first, just like with your food, you got to read the ingredient. And, and, and the, what it says up in the front is, is mostly a marketing. 
right? And then uh, one has to do some research on their own, right? Uh, and just because they said, uh, like vitamin D as an example, it says you need vitamin D, D3, and then it says it on the, uh, the label up in the front, but how much, right? Um, and, and everyone has a different need. Not everyone would need, you know, 5,000 IU or 10,000 IU. Uh, for most people, because they do spend most of their time inside, they may need 5,000 IU to truly optimize their health. But most commonly, it's out, you know, 1,000 or 2,000. It's under dose. So you do need to educate yourself. You do need to get some lab values from your primary care doctors or family physicians. And then you also got to, you know, turn the, the bottle around read the label, right? And then, and then do they have a lot of fillers? Uh, what are the, the ingredients in there? It, don't just look at the active ingredients. And then also look at the, if, if the active ingredients actually has the, the dose that is going to make an impact. And, and, and a lot of times also even probiotics is a perfect example. You know, a lot of times uh, people get, that's only about one to 2 billion CFU, which really doesn't do much. Uh, and a lot of studies show that if it's going to make an impact, it's, it, it needs to be broad spectrum, and then also needs to be uh, anywhere from 30 to 50 a billion CFU. So those are the things that, that you do need to educate yourself because there's so many, uh, there's like 78,000 uh, supplement companies just here in, in the U.S. And then also you got to know the source, who's developing it, right? You know, if you look at the, the Facebook or social media, there's a lot of different advertisement, manufacturers encouraging people to start their own uh, a supplement company where they could private label it. And then those individuals may have interest in health and wellness, but they don't necessarily understand anything about making the supplements or the, the ingredients. They're just uh, repackaging it and reselling it. So know your source. And, and, and when we uh, uh, put together uh, scientific advisory board members and other uh, physicians, uh, and they're putting their reputation on the line. They're putting their medical license on the line. And so I think that that is a, a huge difference. And then uh, we are actually utilizing the, the products in the clinic setting, not as a prescription medicine, but also, you know, um, a lot of traditional doctors are also practicing somewhat of a, you know, holistic medicine and trying the, the supplements and nutrition before they go to the medicine. But uh, I really encourage people to know uh, the source and then also make sure that it is certified by the, the GMP is good manufacturing product. And then also are they a FDA registered uh, facility and FDA doesn't uh, regulate the, the ingredients and then doesn't make you go through all the testing like a prescription medicine. However, if you're registered, they can come in at any time and inspect the, the process, quality process of making the, the, the supplements. So those are some of the, the important things that they do need to know about. Hey, are they FDA registered? Are they certified with the GMP? Uh, and then are they getting you know, annual inspections? Do they have the right ingredients, right dosage? And then also who's actually producing those uh, products? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, like even uh, some people may have heard, even the GNC, even the Walmart, Target, they've all been fine for carrying the supplements that really didn't even have active ingredients, okay? mm -hmm. because their purpose is different. Their purpose is to sell the supplements for profit. You know, like in our case, it's a group of physicians that is practicing medicine, you know, along with uh, uh, providing this supplement. So mm -hmm. I think the, uh, it's a, it's a complete, we're uh, practicing in a completely different space. Yeah, for sure you are. And so Neogen got started with Neonox and I wanna go back to nitric oxide a little bit. Can you explain, I mean, you explained how our nitric, our ability to create nitric oxide goes down but how does it affect our age? Does it really just affect our age because it's helping all systems flow better? Or, um, you know, like, how, how does it really affect the aging process? Yes, so nitric oxide plays a, a, a so many different roles in our body. One of the most important is like you talk about uh, circulation because it is produced inside the blood vessel in the, the endothelium. That's where it gets mostly pr produced. And then it is the, the strongest blood vessel uh, dilator, but also it, it's in the, the immune system and immune cells also. And nitric oxide actually kills the different pathogens. Um, also, it is critical for our 
uh, a central nervous system as well as a peripheral nervous system also because it is a, 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 a function also as a neurotransmitter to release uh, certain other neurotransmitters so that the, the nerve can send the, the signals much easier and, and much better. And those are some of the, the, uh, the, the functions of nitric oxide, but it's considered the miracle molecule because there's countless uh, functions of nitric oxide uh, within our system. And then, you know, of course, it plays a very important role in our skin because you have to have a good circulation. It's critical for metabolic uh, uh, process because without it, your blood sugar elevates because nitric oxide uh, plays a very important role actually placing the uh, glute forward transporter. It's basically like a door that allows the, the blood sugar to come inside the cell. And when you have a depletion of nitric oxide, the, the glute forward transporter cannot get onto the plasma membrane, the cellular membrane. So essentially you're not able to place the door on the wall and then so that the, the, the blood sugar will be trapped out in the, the bloodstream and therefore your blood sugar is going to elevate. And that is uh, the why when you elevate the nitric oxide, people's blood sugar is better regulated, and then also their A1C uh, improves. And, and those are only very, very few uh, examples of countless functions of nitric oxide. Amazing, that is super fascinating. And to think, um, you know, if you don't have that door on the cell wall, and then you also have a lot of saturated fat stuck in the cell, the blood sugar is just never going to stand a chance getting into the cell and doing what it needs to do. So we need nitric oxide and we need to decrease the saturated fat that we're yes. consuming. Yeah, um, you, you bring up a, a, such an important point. Uh, most people think that the diabetes uh, is, is due to eating a lot of carbohydrates. Right? But we know that if you eat the right type of carb, we're not talking about simple, you know, process, uh, refined carbohydrate. We're talking about complex carb that comes from the whole food. Uh, then you're going to have it as much as you want because you're so insulin sensitive. But when you are eating a processed food, an animal-based product with a lot of saturated fat and trans fat, all those fat are going to be trapped inside the, the cell. So it's, and then, you know, in medicine, everything has to be fancy. So we call it intramyocellular lipids, mm -hmm. right? And then the fat inside the skeletal muscles, as well as uh, also in the liver cells. Then, then you have your cell thinks it has so much energy, you don't need the blood sugar to come inside the cell. And that's one of the most important reasons for elevation of blood sugar and development of insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes. But also it is the, the uh, lack of nitric oxide and then also uh, inflammation in our system. And those are the three main factors uh, that I believe is a main source of insulin resistance and, and type 2 diabetes. Wow, wow. So, okay, can you explain why vitamin B is in Neonox, which is what helps us create the nitric oxide? This is the supplement that you know started your Neogen, your guys' Neogen uh, business. Why is vitamin B in there? Why is it so important for us to take it regardless of if we are omnivorous or carnivorous or uh, strictly whole food plant-based? Yeah. Uh, so so in, in U.S., most people are uh, uh, either 40% have deficiency of vitamin uh, B12 or they're not at the, the optimal level. We have uh, vitamin B6 and folate, methylated folate, because about 40% of the population cannot activate their folic acid. So it is important. Uh, and, and unless you have a specific test, you know, in my belief is that go ahead and do take the, the, the methylated uh, folate. And then also vitamin B12. Those all function as cofactors to the uh, endothelial nitric oxide synthase. It's an enzyme that actually produces the, the nitric oxide. Uh, and that is why the, the vitamin B6, uh, uh, folate, and B12 are very, very important. Also, the folate, we have it as a methylated because 40% of the population are not able to, to methylate or activate the, the folic acid. So it is important uh, for them to actually get the, the activated uh, uh, folate. And nitric oxide also uh, uh, plays a very important role in the, the immune system, right? And that's why the, the B vitamins also play, uh, is something that we recommend to, to make sure that our patients are taking the optimal dose to, to further boost their immune system um, because they also function as a, a activator 
or the cofactors of the, the enzyme that produces the nitric oxide. Got it. Yeah. So I mean, I, I agree with the methylated B. I think that's methylated folate. That was a test that I got done. I know that I have that MTHFR gene mm -hmm. mutation and I can't synthesize uh, unless it or absorb as well, right? If it's not um, mm -hmm. methylated. So that's good to know. Um, can you explain the difference between animal-based nitrates and nitrites versus plant forms mm -hmm. in regards to nitric oxide production? Yeah. So the, the, the reason why, uh, you know, most people, uh, you know, if they enjoy like the processed food, uh, processed meat uh, these days, um, because now whether it's a bacon or other forms of uh, processed meat, um, uh, we know that uh, World Health Organization has grouped them as a group one uh, carcinogen. If you eat enough, you will develop cancer. And one of the, uh, the reason is, is because they use nitride as uh, salt as a preservative, and then it can develop into nitrosamine, which is a, a carcinogenic uh, agent. And so, so then now they're using others and they say it's a nitrate free process, you know, bacon or processed meat, but, but that's not the, the only reason why processed meat is carcinogenic because there's also heterocyclic amine. And then also you might, you may develop TMAO in, in your system, which, uh, is, which is a trimethylamine and that gets oxidized in your uh, liver. But because the nitrate comes with the, the animal based pro uh, product, which is a protein, mostly protein. And then amine, uh, it gets mixed in with the amine and actually develop a nitrosamine. And that's why it goes in the path of developing nitrosamine rather than developing into nitric oxide. And that is a difference. And then also in plant-based, if you get it from the plant-based source, it also has uh, antioxidants naturally comes from the plant that it actually uh, steers the, the nitrate into uh, uh, develop more into uh, nitric oxide uh, rather than going into and development of the, the nitrous amine. And that is uh, one of the main reasons. So if you get it from the plant source all, uh, and also you're not eating it with the, the animal-based protein, you're less likely to develop nitrous amine. But, uh, but most in, uh, important thing is that if you do eat processed food, it's not just the nitrous amine that is carcinogenic. It is also the other agent that you develop, you know, from cooking in a high heat, developing heterocyclic amine, and then also trimethylamine that gets oxidized by the bacteria, you know, uh, first formed by the bacteria in your gut, and then goes to your liver, and then develops into something called TMAO that increases the inflammation, and which is a strong association with uh, cardiovascular disease. And so I would definitely uh, avoid uh, eating any type of uh, processed meat. Mm -hmm. okay. Hey friend, before we get too far into this episode, I want to be sure you know about how the environment plays a role on your overall health. For over a decade, I've been learning so much about the lack of health regulation in the personal care and food industries, and that's actually one of the reasons why I started this show. You deserve to know how to protect you and your family from unwanted body burden, and I share further information about how to make better choices and vote with your dollar in our private Facebook community called The Urban Pharmacy. On that note, I want to let you know about one of the easiest ways that we've switched to safer, and that's through my favorite clean beauty brand called Beauty Counter. Your skin is your largest organ, and what you put on it every day matters a lot. And with a low carbon footprint, cruelty-free formulations, and high-performing results, I haven't found a better beauty brand than Beauty Counter in over five years of working with this mission-driven brand. To learn more and shop clean, head to mybetterbeauty.com. And so we can get, we can produce nitric oxide with copious amounts of greens, feet greens, right? Arugula is the best source, right? Yes, a pound per pound has the most amount of nitrate. Okay. And, but you can also get it by taking Neonox, which is what I really love. I love being able to have something that I can drink. Um, if I know that I'm not going to have room for all the greens that I should be eating that day, like I would favor the mangoes instead. And that's just the way that I live my life. So I really appreciate the convenience of, of having something that I can drink and still have that nitric oxide in my endothelial cells. 
and helping me thrive. So can you explain um, omegas? Can we go into omegas? Like we're still sticking with supplements here. Differences in sources that we can get and why optimally we are getting it from a plant source and how that was, you know, introduced. I, I mean, I'm taking Neomega. Thankfully, mm -hmm. I can now keep all of my my supplements within one, one brand, which I really, really love. So now I have my Omega, I have my, my D and I have my Neonox and more. Um, so can you explain? Yeah. The yeah, from it, it's actually a great point. So, you know, our body, we do need a uh, healthy fat, right? And especially the omegas and uh, specifically EPA and DHA. But when you hear omega-3, and a lot of people are very familiar with it, and they know that it is good for your heart or cardiovascular uh, system, their family practitioners may recommend them. But, but then they always associate that with fish or, or fish oil. And most people think that omega-3 comes from the fish. Actually, the fish, they don't produce the, the omega-3. They get the, the omega-3 by eating microalgae in the ocean. And so you are actually, if you get it from the fish itself, you're getting it from the middleman, not directly from the source that actually produce the, the omega-3. And then, um, and specifically EPA and then also uh, DHA. But the problem that we have with the fish is that the, all the studies have shown and almost every single fish oil that's on the market and even including the fish uh, itself are contaminated because our ocean is contaminated. So they contain a lot of different forms of contaminant that tends to negate any benefit that you may get from omega-3. And omega-3 is very important for your central nervous system. So for your brain and your uh, spin uh, spinal cord development as a fetus and even as a baby, but also even as an adult for brain health, cardiovascular health and eye health. And then also for immune system and gut health and and so it plays a very very important role and then we believe that uh, everyone should because unless your diet is um, very uh, diverse and then also you're getting you know like especially if you're uh, whether you're vegan plant-based or or you know omnivore paleo most people are not taking intaking enough uh, optimal level of omega-3 so we recommend people as uh, um, to optimize their brain health and cardiovascular health to to supplement it but most people are you know doing it with the uh, the fish oil and then now the studies have shown that it negates any benefit and so uh, we encourage them to utilize plant-based microalgae based uh, omega-3 and then um, uh, a lot of uh, within the vegan community they say well we can get it from the walnuts we can get it from the flaxseed yes you can however only very small percentage actually uh, gets to become the the, the uh, long chain fatty acid into epa and, and dha and so you can convert them but is that enough and we don't believe that it is the optimal level so for myself so that uh, for my brain health and for my cardiovascular health uh i definitely a supplement and a supplement with the plant-based omega-3 yeah and uh, most of us are getting too much omega-6 and we're not getting that good balance so i find it super necessary to take take a supplement for sure what can you tell me a little bit what you already touched on this but in terms of probiotics can you tell me, just go revisit that and how, how do people know how to find the right one? Yeah. And so the, there's so many different probiotics out there, right? And then, the, you know, uh, whether it is a yogurt or whether it is a drink, and there's so many people that are uh, promoting it. However, uh, in order to be really effective, it has to be very concentrated. And, and, and we recommend anywhere from, you know, 30 to 50 billion CFU. And then we want it to be a uh, broad uh, a spectrum. Uh, so, you know, um, the neo, um, uh, neobiome actually contains 14 different uh, uh, strains and from the lactobacillus, uh, different strains of it, and then also uh, bifidobacters. And then um, so it is a very important to have a broad base and then also enough. Because if you look at most of the probiotics, it tends to contain very small, I and mean, it sounds like a lot because it says 
two to five billion you know, CFU. But but in the world of the you know bacteria, that is extremely uh, small amount. And then also uh, the different medium that the uh, the culture uh, is made. And then in ours is made is a completely plant based. And so uh, uh, there's no animal based medium that's utilized to to grow and and, and culture the. The bacteria and so that's another thing that you want and the, whether you're you know, plant-based or not you know at least a supplement wise you need to get it from the cleanest a source and then you want to try to get it from the, the plant base just like even vitamin d3 most people don't realize vitamin d3 most common form is an animal-based product it's not a, a, a plant-based and so you want to specifically look for a plant-based uh, supplement if you can mm -hmm. That's so interesting. Yeah, I I found out recently that the probiotic that I was taking, um, which I never would have thought, but it was at the medium that it was growing in. It was actually like at the stomach of a cow, and I had no idea. So yeah. now I know, and now I'm not yeah. taking that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right, Doctor Wan, can you explain to me? I don't know if you made this up or where where this came from, but your your pears lifestyle. Yes. Uh, so it, it, uh, I like uh, using acronyms to, to remember things. And then so the Paris lifestyle is something that it, it, it fit the, the principles of uh, longevity uh, medicine. And you know, even the, the blue zones like the, the Dan Buettner's and some of these principles. But, uh, you know, I research a lot of different aspects. And then I try to uh, condense them into uh, an acronym that I could remember. And, and what I came up with is the, the PEARS uh, lifestyle. So, so P stands for uh, plant-based. Whether you're plant-based or not, you know, your you know, majority of your plate should be plant-based. So I tell people, eat more plants. Because I have to meet a lot of my patients, you know, halfway. Right? They may not turn 100% uh, plant-based uh, overnight, but I encourage them to, to uh, fill their plate with as much plants as possible. Right? And then also moving your body is so critical. So E stands for exercise. It's simply, you know, you, whether it's a five minutes or 15 minutes a day, hopefully it's a, a more. It doesn't have to be intensive exercises. So simply just walking briskly, you know, 30 minutes each day will make a significant impact in your health. So that's something that we encourage. Uh, as you can't tell right now, but I'm standing on my uh, uh, treadmill. So I have a you know walking treadmill under my desk. I, I don't ever sit you know during the day when I'm working because uh, I'm in front of the computer screen and then I'm you know walking all day long. And so you got to constantly move your body. And then A stands for you know avoiding toxins. And so it's not just the the alcohol or tobacco, but we are surrounded by so many different uh, chemicals. You know, it's so many different toxins like makeup, as you know uh, 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 very well. And then there's they have so many ingredients, toxins that, especially in U.S., that doesn't uh, that's not even allowed in European countries and uh, Asian countries, but is allowed in this country or household chemicals or different types of aerosols. Right. And so those are the, all the things that, you know, we want to avoid. And I even consider certain medications to be toxin as well. So if you can treat things without medicine, that is should be your first goal. Right. Using food as medicine and lifestyle as medicine. And okay? R is restore. So there's a lot more things. It's, it's, it's about restoring our mind, our spirit and our soul, as well as our body. So sleep is one of the most important thing in order to, to restore. Because when you sleep, you're actually, your brain actually shrinks and then it, it's allowed to, to detoxify. And uh, we need seven to nine hours of uh, sleep a night. And then quality of the sleep is just as important as a quantity. And that's something that I struggle with and I, I try to work on uh, uh, every single day. And then also management of your stress, no matter how you do it. You know, for me, it is a meditation in the morning and it's practicing my gratitude and journaling. And those things are really help manage my stress, but something that everyone needs to work on and belonging to a loving community. Uh, and and that uh, has shown that it increases the longevity, having sense of purpose also, because if mm -hmm. you have a reason for uh, to live, then your body will understand it will help you live a lot longer uh, as well. And and uh, so loving community and sense of purpose is very important. And then as finally S stands for supplement. And there's a lot of different, you know, uh, different opinions, especially even in some of the, the plant based physicians, or you just got to eat healthy, and then you don't need supplements. Well, not everyone can live a perfect life. 
Okay, mm -hmm. it's about progress. It's not about perfection. And then also, I I always say I don't want to be just normal. I want to live well beyond hundred years old because. I just want to see what the world is going to be like in 50 years from now. And but then I don't want to be in a wheelchair in nursing home and then losing my memories uh, of, of people that I care about. And I want to thrive. I want to be like the farmers in, in Costa Rica, in you know, Ikaria, in uh, Okinawa, who well beyond 100 years old, they're still thriving and they're still working really hard. And then they have their mind and, and spirit and their body all intact. That's how I want to do it. So if it's going to take uh, taking additional supplements to, to optimize uh, uh, my body, that's, that's what I would recommend because that's what I'm going to be doing. So that is my uh, Paris lifestyle. I love it. I love it. Acronyms are so nerdy and fun. And I love, yeah. I, I'm trying to create my own, honestly. Um, I love it. So, okay. So speaking of supplements, one last thing on supplements, my husband and I, have our company called Green Growers that we have for a few years been making elderberry syrup and DIY elderberry kits. Do you know, or can you touch on the benefits of the Sambuca plant, the Sambuca plant, um, it, why elderberry might be really beneficial to consume? Yeah, um, I, I don't know the, the chemical uh, reasons, but I've actually read a lot of uh, uh, studies where the elder, you know, when you take it, uh, preventative measures that it help prevent even catching cold because obviously it helps boost the immune system but also it has actually helped people reduce the symptoms and then also shorten the symptoms for not just a common cold but also flu as well it helps decrease the inflammation it, it also functions as an antioxidant but it is a pretty well known um, to to actually optimize your uh, and boost your immune system and so that's something that uh, when somebody is looking for a natural means that is something that I uh, definitely recommend. Yeah, it's really high up there on the ORAC value for mm -hmm. potency and antioxidants. So I find it super fascinating. All right, aside from supplements, can you tell me why you practice cold therapy? I've been watching you. I know that I need to get myself in those cold showers. I, I, I feel like I know the benefits, but maybe you can just convince me a little bit more. Why are you doing this cold therapy? Why are you taking cold plunges into your swimming pool in 20 degrees? What is behind all of this Wim Hof crazy cold stuff? Yeah, so there, there's a, a um, it's again, it's based on the, the studies. And there's a lot of uh, not only the, the, uh, the physical benefit, of, but also the mental benefit. But physical benefit wise, it has shown that the, the cold shower or cold therapy it is uh, to decrease the inflammation in your body. Because, you know, one of the uh, things that really damages our body is inflammation. So you got to attack it from many different directions. And that's why, like, in, in, when we practice orthopedics, let's say you sprain an ankle, what do you do? The first thing you do is, is put somebody, you know, wrap it in the eyes or, 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 you know, do a cold therapy. It's not just to reduce the, the swelling by contracting the, the blood vessel, but it's also to help decrease inflammation. And so it's something that, uh, that uh, you know, we should try to do each day. But, but also, the, the, uh, when you do a cold therapy on a consistent basis, your body tends to develop more brown fat that actually uh, generates more heat than means it's going to burn more calories so it also helps people you know develop uh, optimal weight also uh, improving their metabolic uh, syndrome if they have that but also uh, the you know we have to get comfortable doing things that is uncomfortable okay? mm -hmm. and uh, it has shown to really uh, help our uh, develop our willpower and then get us go but also it's great for uh, skin uh, and, uh, and, and many studies have shown that, you know, either cold shower, cold plunges really helps people develop a much better skin as well. And so there's a, a, a not just the, 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 men, uh, the physical, but also a mental uh, benefit. And, and, you know, when I first started doing it, uh, it was hard. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, it just uh, the fear of turning on that, the, you know, the knob and then in getting that cold water. But there's different w um, uh, ways people can do it. People can start out doing a hot shower and then transition into cold shower, and maybe do 30 seconds and maybe and then you know, extend to a minute. And then it gets easier and easier. And then afterwards, it feels so amazing. And, and sometimes, uh, you know, I, I like to shock my body. So rather than the cold shower, and then just, you know, jumping into a, a, a really, really cold pool, or sometimes I even do an ice bath. 
But when I do that, I, what I also do is make sure I do breathing techniques before. I mentioned Wim Hof, but sometimes, you know, I do like just meditation and other simple breathing uh, techniques. But the, what that also does is that that decreases inflammation and then also alkalizes your body. That tends to reduce the pain. And then the, this is one of the things that we also encourage our uh, orthopedic patients to do the cold shower or cold plunge because it really does help with their uh, uh, help them manage the pain, not just from the decreasing the, uh, the inflammation, but also uh, for athletes, it, it, it enhances their recovery time uh, as well. But the, the breathing also tends to, like I mentioned, alkalizing your system that tends to, to reduce the pain. So when you actually plunge in, so I do that uh, breathing technique for about 10 minutes. Like if you saw my post on social media, what you didn't see was me laying on, on the floor and doing the breathing technique before uh, I jumped in. And then once I'm in it, I don't feel anything. And then the, uh, and after you know, a minute or two, then you start to feel tingling sensation at, at, um, you know, in your toes and your fingers. And then um, you know, then you know it's time to, to perhaps get out. But the breathing technique is also a very important part of doing the, the cold shower or cold therapy. Oh, gosh, I need to practice what I preach. I teach people all the time to get uncomfortable and get out of their comfort zone. And I mean, that right there, I think, is what I need to do because it's the thing that scares me the most. But you know what? If it's going to give me better skin and prettier hair, I I'll go for that. So yeah. <laughs> take what we Great can get. Reason. Um, okay, so Dr. Wan, where can we find you? Where can we learn more from you and continue following you? Yes, thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, people can find me either on Facebook or Instagram at Dr. Wan MD, D R W N uh, W O N M D, and then also occasionally, you know, most of the time, every other week on Mondays um, at 8 p.m. Uh, Central Time. I do a Facebook Live and give a brief information about different topics, and then I answer different questions. So if people want to join, uh, that's when they also can find me. But you can always find me on the Instagram or Facebook. And also, if people have any specific health-related questions, you know, I welcome them. You can DM me, and um, and you know, I'll get back to you. And I personally respond to all the the questions people send me. I love that. So so kind of you. Okay, I have one very last question. What does living a holistic life mean to you? It is, uh, uh, for me, it is about compassion for myself, for my family, for my friends, and, and for all the ones that I love. And then also well beyond that, and the people, the animals, and, and the planet. And then I think we all live in the, the harmony uh, uh, with this you know, universe. And we all have to have you know, if we uh, have a compassion for, for them, then they will have a compassion for us. I think we, then we can develop a much better world. And then also we can live a very, very much healthier life uh, physically, spiritually, as well as, you know, mentally. And, and for me, that's what the holistic living is all about. Oh, I love that. Thank you so much. And we will see you soon. Okay. Thank you for the opportunity. I'm over here cheering you on because you just finished another episode of The Urban Pharmacy. For today's show notes, head on over to theurbanpharmacy.com and be sure to join us inside our private Facebook group called The Urban Pharmacy, where we share inspiration, live trainings, and holistic living tips to help you build community and the healthy lifestyle that you've always wanted. If you enjoyed today's episode, make sure you hit that subscribe button and please consider leaving us a five-star review. Before we connect again on the next show, follow me on Instagram at The Urban Pharmacy. That's urban with an H and pharmacy with an F. And I can't wait to hear your wellness journey as we get to know each other better. You know, there's truly no better time than now to level up your life. And I am so proud of you for showing up today. Until next time, be well, Health Crusader.